Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I am going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the articulation at the thoracic spine. So we have already discussed about the facets and also you might wonder why are we talking about this again. So I just wanted to cover the interbody joints over here. Again, facets some few more points. And then I wanted to compare the interbody joint of the thoracic and the cervical. And cervical I had kind of skipped over there. So I just wanted to mention that also. And then we'll discuss some points under the ligament. And then in the next video, we will be talking about the kinematics and kinetics together, hopefully. Okay. So let's start with the topic. Starting with the articulation, that is the interbody joint and the facet joint. Okay. In all the cervical, thoracic, lumbar spine, there are two joints the interbody joint and facet joint. So over here, interbody joint, the vertebra is flat. Okay. The surface of the vertebra, if you see thoracic vertebra, it is flat, it doesn't have any curves. And it allows this flat surface, it allows translation in all the directions. Okay, all translations are possible. And the disc between them allows the tipping. So there will be a disc between the two thoracic vertebras, which will allow the tipping to happen like this, like flexion or extension or lateral flexion. All these tipping will be happening because of a nice flat surface that is present. In comparison to this, there is the cervical vertebra whose body is very different if you see. So now in cervical region, the surface is saddle shaped. Now what is saddle? It has both concave and convex, right? I've discussed about what saddle is in our shoulder video. The sternoclavicular joint, it has a saddle shape articulation, right? So basically saddle means it will have concave. So if you can see this concavity is there. But if you see it from the other direction, that is in this direction, this part is convex, right? This part, it is coming from down, coming up and then going down again. So this part is convex, but this part is concave. So this concavity is formed because of the uncinate process. And same happens inferiorly. Again, it's concave over here like this and convex the opposite way. So this is the saddle shape that is seen at the body or the interbody joint. And this is formed due to your uncinate process, concave plus convex. Then going ahead, the facets, we have already discussed about the facets of the thoracic joint. So I would like to add a few more points. It is a plain synovial joint as cervical joint also. And there is fibroadipose meniscoid tissue, which are present in the facet joints at all levels, right? And there is increased lateral flexion rotation because of its orientation, I have discussed about this point in the previous video and reduced flexion extension because it's flat, right? It's flat over here, right? So flexion will be a problem because it's right over here. It's like this. So flexion would be moving forward and it will be blocked by the facet itself. So that's why flexion is reduced flexion and extension. Apart from this, the capsule at the thoracic joint is more taut than cervical region. If you remember in cervical region, the capsule around the facets was pretty loose, which gave it a larger range of motion in the cervical region, which is not the case in the thoracic region. And one last point about the ligaments is the ligamentum flavum and the anterior longitudinal ligaments are way thicker in the thoracic region which will again restrict the range of motion. And as you see, anterior longitudinal ligament is there. So that will be hampering your flexion extension movement. And also the ligamentum flavum will be hampering your flexion extension movement. So that's all I had to mention in this video. It's a very short video. In the next video, we'll talk about the kinematics and kinetics. Right? So now let's summarize quickly. There is the interbody joint, which is flat in thoracic, whereas in cervical, it is saddle shape correct concave plus convex and this is formed by the uncinate process now because this is flat over here the range of motion is very high or, or the translation occurs in all the directions 
Then going to the facets, it is in the frontal plane. So flexion extension is reduced, whereas lateral flexion is the highest. It has fibroadipose meniscoid tissues around it and it is a plain synovial joint. And very importantly, the capsule around it is comparatively taut when you compare it to the cervical region, which gives it lesser range of motion. And then last, the ligamentum flavum and anterior longitudinal ligaments are thicker, which again restrict the range of motion. So with that, we finish up this topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.